Suppose we have a field and create the polynomial ring form it. Then we're going to take a polynomial in there. Then the ideal generated by that polynomial is a maximal ideal if and only if that polynomial is irreducible over f. So first of all, to prove this, let's suppose that the ideal generated by p of x is a maximal ideal. If we have that, then a couple of things. First of all, p of x can't be 0, because certainly 0, which would be the ideal generated by that, that's not a maximal ideal. Also, we can't have p of x is not a unit, because if it were a unit, then the ideal generated by p of x would just be all of fx. And fx can't be a maximal ideal. So what we really have is we've got a polynomial that has a positive degree. Well, actually that's not quite true, but So let's go ahead and let's say that we're trying to say, let's assume p of x is equal to some g of x times h of x. To show that p of x is irreducible, we need to show that these things basically have to have positive degree. So, let's think about this in terms of ideals. Because multiplying h of x times g of x gives us p of x, that must mean that the ideal generated by p of x is contained within the ideal generated by g of x is obviously contained within fx. But by definition of maximal ideal, that must mean that either p of x is equal to g of x, or gx equals the whole ring. If this, we don't know that p of x and g of x are the same polynomial, but we do know that they have the same degree. But if that's the case, if p of x and g of x have the same degree, this must mean that h of x is just a unit and so this thing isn't a proper factorization. It's a trivial factorization. Similarly, if gx equals fx, that means that gx is a unit. If gx is a unit, then once again, this is a trivial factorization. So there's no way that we can write p of x as a product of two polynomials that both have lower degree than p of x. Okay, what about the other way? Let's suppose that p of x is irreducible. And then, okay, let's say we've got the ideal generated by p of x Let's say that there's some other ideal that's contained with that, and that's the subset of f of x. Now, we know that we're in a principal ideal domain. So that must mean that that ideal here is 
generated by some polynomial. But then that must mean, since this thing is a subset of this, specifically that polynomial is contained within g of x. And so that means that p of x is equal to g of x times some other h of x. But that must mean that either g was a constant or h is a constant. So if g is a constant, that means that the ideal is equal to all of f of x. That must mean that p of x equals g of x. These ideals are the same. Either way, so this is either equal to this or equal to this, which is the definition of p of x being a maximal ideal. Now, I don't know if this one is all that important by itself, but there's a very simple corollary that is very interesting. Suppose we got a field and then we got an irreducible polynomial, then when I create that factor ring for the, the polynomial ring, based on the ideal generated by that polynomial, I get a field. Why is that? Well, because p of x is irreducible, by this, the ideal generated has to be a maximal ideal. And we've shown before that when we take a quotient ring over a maximal ideal, it becomes a field. This is interesting because it means that, for example, if I create my field being the real numbers, I create my polynomial ring, R of x, there aren't multiplicative inverses in this. This thing is not a field. It's a ring. It's an integral domain, but it does not have multiplicative inverses. However, if I take an irreducible polynomial in there, say for example, x squared plus one, and I create my factor ring, that does become a field. In fact, we've kind of looked at this before, this field is isomorphic to the complex numbers. But depending on what irreducible polynomial we used, we can get all kinds of interesting things happening here. A further little corollary is that if we got a field and we got one irreducible polynomial, and that irreducible polynomial divides the product of two other polynomials, then that irreducible polynomial has to divide one or the other of those polynomials. To show this follows directly from the other stuff we just did, it's a little bit more complicated, but it does follow directly. But what it really shows is that irreducible polynomials kind of work like prime numbers. That you can't split it up in any way. Again, that's kind of what irreducible means, but the whole idea is that just like if you have a prime number dividing, say, two numbers multiplied together, that prime number has to divide one or the other. It can't, it's, there's no way that it divides the product without dividing one of the individual numbers. Now, let's use some of this stuff very simply here. Let's say we've got a Z2x, and let's look at the polynomial x cubed plus x plus 1. 
That's a cubic polynomial, so that means it's irreducible if it doesn't have a zero. And plugging in zero and one, which are the only elements of Z2, neither one of those is zero. So that means that's an irreducible polynomial. And that means that Z2x mod the ideal generated by x cubed plus x plus 1 is a field. But if we think about what we've got here, everything in there is going to be of the form some cubic polynomial, uh, quadratic polynomial, something ax squared plus bx plus c plus my ideal. So that means that this thing here is a field and it has eight elements because we've got two choices for this, this coefficient, two for that, two for that. So we've got a field with eight elements. You can kind of use this thing to sort of construct all sorts of different types of fields that have a number of elements that are power of a prime. Finally, and I don't think I want to even read through this whole thing, what we have is that when we're factoring over the integers, it's unique. There'll be a number of constants out in front, and those constants will be prime numbers because non-prime numbers could be broken down. And then we've got a bunch of irreducible polynomials. Now, we say uniqueness, but it's only unique up to units in the thing, and in this the integers, we've got the units 1 and negative 1. So, by looking at these things, if I had two different ways of doing it, then the numbers may not be exactly the same, but they're going to be just positives or negatives of the other. Similarly, the irreducible polynomial factors of degree higher than 0, those are just going to be possibly negatives of each other, but other than that, they'll match up on a 1 to 1 basis.